Sir, sir, we're, we're losing her. <gasps> She's crashing. Fight! Hi, my name is Annie Onishi. Annie is a general surgeon at Columbia University. Today, we're going to be breaking down clips from movies and television about the emergency room and the operating room. Slapping the patient, the abyss. Roll the clip. <laughs> So rule number one of CPR is never stop effective chest compressions in order to slap or yell words of encouragement at the patient. Fight, God damn it! Yelling at a patient or cheering them on has never brought them back to life. Fight, fight, fight! So here we have another example of... <laughs> Jesus. All right, we tried smelling salts, caffeine injections, ice baths. That's not really how we do it in real life. We have other mean methods to wake up a patient who has some sort of neurological problem. We have a proposition for you. Including pressing on the nail beds as hard as you possibly can, or rubbing on their sternum. Thank you. Appendectomy. Spies like us. And now the first incision. First of all, you need two people and two people only to remove a patient's appendix. I don't know why there's 25 people in that room. Second of all, that is the hairiest abdomen I've seen in a really long time. Cut the sucker. Surgeons have very severe OCD and all hair needs to be removed before we even think about operating. <gasps> if a patient reacts like that to an incision, it means the anesthesiologist isn't doing his or her job. This man is dead. And check out this gas. <sighs> Now, people who are about to die do display something called agonal breathing, which is a very characteristic pattern of respirations, but nothing like this. <laughs> something tells me that these guys are not real doctors. <laughs> Codes. Rookie Blue. She's in VTAC, I'm calling a code. Get back, please. Right. One detail that's very accurate is the first person who responded to the code did a nice job of removing all the excess furniture from the room. This is gonna make a lot of extra room for personnel, any equipment that may be used to help save this patient. She's in VTAC, I'm calling a code. Another very nice detail, the nurse calls for help before she even begins chest compressions on the patient. It's always important to have backup in a situation like this. Clear. Asystole. This scene also uses some very official sounding doctor words such as asystole and V-fib or V-tac. These are also real conditions that would occur during a cardiac arrest. They like a heart attack. And their responses are accurate. Yeah. Now, if you check out the code scene in Drop Dead Diva, Prepare to intubate, I need a 12 French tube. Somebody in the room says, prepare to intubate, I need a 12, a 12 French, French tube. tube. A 12 French tube, 12 French tube. This is basically nonsense talk. It sounds medical, but it's not real at all. Another thing I overheard someone say is give him give an amp, amp of, of epi and when the fluid's wide, wide open. open. That's pretty accurate, something someone may very well say in a code. An amp is sort of an unreliable way to communicate a dose of epinephrine. Usually we talk in milligrams. Run the fluids wide open refers to physically opening up the lines that the IV fluids are running in so that the patient gets as much fluid as possible as fast as possible. All right, charging to 360. All clear. So here they charge a defibrillator to 360 joules, which is an accurate dose of electricity in order to get the heart kick-started into a rhythm that works. We got a shockable rhythm, 200 joules. Back in Rookie Blue, they charge to 200 joules, which is an outdated dose of electricity and no longer thought to be effective. Now in basketball, they shock somebody with 15,000 volts. 15,000! 15, 15,000 volts! <laughs> the machine only goes up to 360, so 15,000 is a little bit unreasonable. Do you know what you're doing? What's it look like? An execution? Adrenaline to the heart. Pulp Fiction. Yeah, it's gotta be exactly where a shot in the heart. I don't know exactly where a heart is. I mean, I think it's right here. Okay, okay, okay. I think it's ready. An arrhythmia is when the heart is not beating in a coordinated fashion. For certain arrhythmias, a milligram of epinephrine or adrenaline is exactly what we would use to kickstart the heart into what we would call perfusing rhythm. All right, please hurry up, man. Okay, hurry up. Here, I'll tell you what to do. No, 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 man, man, man. I ain't give, you, you, you're gonna give it a shot. No, you're gonna give it a shot. Someone should probably be doing chest compressions as they're trying to sort all of this out. I ain't giving it a shot. I ain't giving it a shot. There's a whole lot of standing around, a whole lot of waiting around. I've never done this yeah, before. I ain't never done it before either, all right? Time is myocardium, people. It's gotta be hard enough to get through her breastplate into her heart. You also wouldn't really necessarily have to go straight through the sternum to access the heart. You could very easily access the heart through one of the intercostal spaces, which is the space between two ribs. <laughs> You're all right, and say something. Something. A little bit of a stretch, but it is plausible that adrenaline straight to the heart would help. <laughs> Patient privacy, hangover. Turn. All right. Go. And cough. First of all, if you're gonna check some old sweaty dude's prostate, please put on two gloves, come on. <laughs> What we have here on our hands is a big, big HIPAA violation, which is the law that protects patients' privacy. Interesting. You would never, ever examine a patient in his underwear in front of a couple of other patients, and you would never discuss patient care in front of someone else. No big deal. Selfies in the OR. 
Grey's Anatomy. Okay, what is so mesmerizing that you can't do your job? Are those worms? I can't look away. Oh. I won't apologize. You better recognize. If you took photos of an anesthetized patient without their explicit prior written permission, you could get in a lot of trouble, you could lose your medical license, you would almost certainly get fired. No more photos. While it may seem far-fetched, there is a parasitic infection called strongyloides. This one? that does cause your intestines to get completely blocked up by these worms, and a lot of times you do need an operation to get them removed. Worms are a deal breaker. Happy nightmares. <laughs> Removing a bullet, Mr. Bean. Sorry, sir, we're, we're losing him. I've got to get in there now. One of the most frequent things I hear in an operating room on TV or in the movies is, we're, we're losing, losing him. him. I have never once heard that in my real life, ever once. We're losing him. Ever. The point of trauma surgery after a gunshot wound is not necessarily to go get the bullet out. You can't just, oh, that is too dangerous. <laughs> what you're really there to do is fix the damage that's caused by the bullet. Oh, this guy's gonna die. Plenty of people walking around out there with bullets that show up on x-rays all the time. climbing back. So the patient seems to be cured here by just the removal of the bullet, which I can guarantee you is not what happens. And again, here we have another example of a patient being miraculously cured by just the removal of a bullet. Check out Harold and Kumar. That was genius. In general, somebody who's shot in the chest is not cured by simply removing the bullet. That bullet's usually caused all kinds of damage inside that needs to be fixed. Great job. You guys did it. No, it's you. I've never actually seen anybody cheer when a bullet gets removed because that's usually the least exciting part of that operation. And of course, with every bullet removal, there's the quintessential dink, 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 dink. Doesn't happen in real life. Those buckets are actually plastic, so less impressive. Operating room galleries, Seinfeld. Kramer, stop it. <laughs> So just like in Grey's Anatomy, this fictional hospital also seems to have a viewing gallery for people to just sit around and watch operations. Get Don't they have work to do? No. Back in the day, before we had the internet or textbooks, operating galleries did definitely exist. They were depicted in a number of famous paintings from the 20th century. But these days, it's just not a thing. I can see. Sorry. Operating room fashion, dead ringers. You'd think red scrubs were not very realistic, but it turns out they are. Surgeons and people who work in the operating room have to wear a specific color of scrubs, and at my hospital, it's red. Once you've scrubbed in and your hands are considered sterile, you do need other people's help to get you dressed. Patient awareness during an operation from the film, Awake. Okay, open them up nice and wide. Okay, it's happening again. Okay, it's fine, just control it like before. You can do this. Here we go, here we go. Come on, man, just swallow it. Wake up. So this is a young man undergoing what looks to be an open heart operation who is fully conscious of the proceedings around him. Am I supposed to be asleep right now? All right. So you live in the city, Larry? Guys, I can still hear you, huh? In general, patients don't really dream while they're under anesthesia. This phenomenon is called intraoperative awareness, and luckily it is exceedingly rare. Yeah, right. And this detail right here. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Where the patient's eyelids are taped closed while they're asleep, very real. It's to prevent corneal abrasions. Sleeping like a baby. For me, the most cringeworthy aspect of this clip is the hair removal from the patient's chest. <laughs> Razors actually cause very tiny abrasions in the skin, very clean. which lead to a higher risk of surgical site infection. Don't you guys use shaving cream? We would never, ever, 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 ever use a razor. We use electric clippers. This is something I've never actually seen film or TV get right. The players may have changed, but the game is still the same. Things getting stuck in patients' butts from a whole lot of TV shows. Oh my god! How does that stuff even get up there? Right. Ah! Oh! You know, in real life, this is very, very common. Whatever floats your boat, man. I got musical fats! <laughs> I've seen a carrot, an eggplant, all kinds of dildos of different shapes, sizes, and electronic capabilities, a wine glass, an axe can of body spray, shaving cream. That's about it. I was born. Emergency airway control. The heat. I need a knife and a straw, please. A knife and a straw, please. Ah. I need a knife and a straw. I need to because I'm going to perform an emergency tracheotomy. I'm going to need a glass of vodka. So I really admire Sandra Bullock's chutzpah here. I do think that she's really trying to take this situation into her own hands, so good for her. I don't know what I'm doing. You did this. 
<laughs> However, in a choking patient, emergency tracheotomy may not necessarily help. Okay. It goes in deeper than I thought. If the food particle is stuck further down than where you would put the hole in the neck. I'm so oh. sorry. What are you doing? Oh. 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 You asshole. However, she did do her research. Cricothyroid membrane is exactly where you want to go. You probably could have just pulled the piece of pancake out of his throat. He's alive, isn't he? Now, if you want to see it done right, check out this clip from House. Here we have a nice, long, midline incision, so you don't ding either the carotid or the jugulars. You have a quick dissection right down to the trachea and an insertion of the tracheotomy tube. Perfect. Very well done. Good call. Self-rescue. Casino Royale. You're going to pass out in a few seconds, and you need to keep your heart going. Push the red button now, Bond. This scene has a lot of problems. You're welcome. For a heart rhythm to require defibrillation, it needs to be what's called a non-perfusing rhythm, meaning a patient would therefore most likely be unconscious. There's really never a situation where a patient would be awake and able to do complex tasks like this, but also require defibrillation. Don't interrupt. If 007 is conscious and able to have enough dexterity and mental acuity to perform this complex task, he almost certainly is not in VTAC or VFib. <laughs> and it's not like he could only be partially in VTAC. It's like being a little bit pregnant. You're either in VTAC or you're not. Thank you. Cliche medical terminology. 10 cc's of this. 500 cc's. 5 cc's of that. 500 cc's. CC actually stands for cubic centimeter, which is the same as a milliliter. Vitals are dropping. Vitals are dropping. As I tell my medical students, vitals are vital. We always talk about them. We always want to know what they are. And yes, we ask what they are on the regular. How are vitals? You know, one vital that they never report on in the movies or on TV is urine output. OK, I'm Googling purple pee. For surgeons, urine output is probably the most vital, vital sign. <laughs> Stat. Give me a box of kittens. Stat. Stat. This is actually from the Latin statem, which means immediately, very commonly used. Wouldn't I be a great spokesperson for things? Music in the operating room. Scrubs. We need to make this decision now. Fine, then it's on you. Nurse, erasure. Yes, doctor. Uh This is a very accurate depiction of how the music gets chosen for the OR. Yes, it is. In general, the attending surgeon's the boss, and the attending gets to pick the music. I hate this song. We usually wait until the patient's asleep until we put the music on. Me too, man. Me too. But the discussion before the operation of what we should be listening to is a tale as old as time in the OR. What makes you think you know better? Now, if you check out Nip Tuck, Eyes Without a Face face by Billy Idol, facial plastic surgery. Is there something wrong? Pretty good. Alternatives to anesthesia. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. We should probably use this marijuana. That'll sufficiently sedate the patient for surgery. Marijuana would be a very bad drug to anesthetize a patient with. It's a good thing I found you too. It really does nothing to desensitize your awareness or your sensation of pain. Another example of where they got it wrong is in Faceless. Uh, what are you doing? You're crazy. Uh, uh. Watch your Patient's completely wide awake for a face transplant. Totally unrealistic. Small bowel resection, the nick. We must operate, but we cannot do it to a man who can feel pain. So I think this clip is really well done in terms of an accuracy standpoint. The description of the operation is really well done. Numb the nerves in the spine between the thoracic vertebrae six and seven so as to stop the brain from learning of the pain. Their attention to historical detail is also pretty good too, in terms of having an open OR gallery, people without gloves on, people without gowns and masks. That's just about accurate for the 19th century. So I know we've already discussed that OR galleries aren't really a thing anymore, but back in the 19th century, they totally were, and you can see that here. I know it looks scary, but this is an early prototype for a stapler that is used to connect two portions of small bowel. Still used today. All right, check this part out. I love this part. Your sutures failed in two spots where the obstruction backed up with pressure on them. You should have resected. The nick is very accurate in terms of representing a body part called the mesentery, which is almost never depicted in Hollywood. It's the actual connective tissue that brings the blood supply to and from the small bowel. The nick does it right, but so many examples where Hollywood gets it wrong. Here's an example from Hannibal where the mesentery is just completely absent. <laughs> Mesentery never gets any love. You're gonna want to tell your father all about this. Timing the surgery. Grey's Anatomy. Hey, you need some help? Why? Christina... I'm on a clock, and you're wasting my time. What is your problem? Surgeons are some of the most competitive people on planet Earth, so it really does not surprise myself that Dr. Yang is timing herself doing this procedure. My personal record for cholecystectomy is 22 minutes. Very nice. Homemade surgical instruments. Dead ringers. We'll use these. 
A surgeon's instruments are really extensions of their hands, and certain surgeons have very specific preferences for the instruments that they use. I've just had them made. They're brand new. Give me another five. A lot of our instruments are actually named after the people who did, at one point, invent them at home and bring them in to try them out. Yeah, right. So these instruments are kind of interesting. They look both futuristic and medieval at the same time. I'm afraid I'm not familiar with these instruments, Doctor. And I can only guess that they're used in gynecology. Oh my God, she's bleeding! Oh, no. Get a cry for God's sake. I would say this reaction to bleeding is a little bit dramatic. Get the hell out of here! Yes, patients bleed in the operating room. No, people don't sort of run around and scream, the patient's bleeding! Oh, bleeding! Stopping a surgery at the last second. House. I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my legs. Stop. What you guys do? John, calm down. We didn't even operate. So I've seen a couple of patients have panic attacks before operations. I can't move my legs. Before we do any operation, we go through a very extensive checklist with the nursing staff, with the anesthesiologists. It helps us review why we're there in the operating room, what the possible risks of the operation are, and just make sure everybody's ducks are in a row. John, we're gonna figure out what's wrong with you. First, we need to know one thing. It's pretty unlikely that we would get to the point of doing this checklist and not really realize some kind of massive major problem that the patient would be having right before they get induced under anesthesia. Dr. Wilson, we have a problem. And check out Dr. House's clothes. First of all, he doesn't have a hat on. Second of all, he's in his street clothes. In real life, that guy would have been tackled by about six tiny perioperative nurses far before he got to the operating room. What did you do? Stealing a dead body from the hospital from Little Miss Sunshine. It's very good job. I have never worked in a hospital that has patient care rooms on the first floor. No. Hospital windows don't even open. A patient who's super sick is gonna have all kinds of tubes attached to them, lines. Damn it. Some hospitals even have patient tracker bands that the patient wears so you can know when the patient, for example, is at the CAT scanner or in the operating room. You can't just abandon the body. That would set off some alarm somewhere in the hospital. I don't think sir, you're listening. Sir, you are not the only one that's had somebody die here today, okay? Emergency arm amputation. Requiem for a dream. <laughs> the saw that they're using is more commonly used in autopsies to get the chest open, but not something that we would use on a living patient. No. <sighs> autopsies. You guessed it, from Grey's Anatomy. Don't even tell me you're doing what I think you're doing. In real life, pathologists do autopsies. These are medical doctors who are specifically trained in this type of procedure. At this point, what could it hurt? Surgeons don't do them. Internal medicine doctors don't do them. Not only did you disregard the family's wishes, you, you broke the law. And doing an autopsy on a patient without that family's informed written consent is a big, big, illegal no-no. Huge. Trauma arrival, West Wing. He's been shot in the abdomen, visible entry and exit wound. BP 134 for 78. So even though this patient is the president, it is very standard to have a lot of people involved in any trauma resuscitation. You know they're gonna bill me for that. Sometimes there's as many as 10, maybe 12 or 15 people in the room all there to take care of the patient. Do you have any medical conditions? Well, I've been shot. Everybody has one specific job and one specific job only. You do that job and you get out. Daddy? It didn't hit anything. They're Daddy. just gonna look around and make sure. I'm just so happy to see you. Mom's on her way. At this point, most family members are in a waiting room somewhere. We do need to all do our jobs and take care of the patient in that moment, and it can be very distracting with a hysterical family member in the room. Mom's gonna be pretty pissed. A resident struggles in the operating room. Grey's Anatomy. I could suture directly or clamp. I don't know what to do. I don't know either. I'm not the one operating. There's a lot of blood. She's crashing. In this scene, we have Dr. Christina Yang, who is a resident, doing a open heart operation with her attending in the background, reading the Atlantic Monthly. Look at the aorta. What does it tell you? That I have two options and I don't know which one to do. Why isn't she helping her? So this would never happen in real life. Surgeons and residents learn to operate in a step-by-step -step process that we refer to as graded autonomy. We learn the steps of an operation and very slowly gain our independence. What the hell are you doing? I'm teaching and she's learning. She needs help. She may be too proud to say it, but how about we don't let this patient die? If a patient was ever in trouble, if the resident couldn't get themselves out of danger in an operating room, an attending would always step in and help. How's it going? Yang's killing her patient. Altman's reading the Atlantic Monthly. Totally unrealistic. Surgeons don't read Atlantic Monthly. Waste of time, right? They read The New Yorker. A surgeon removes a live bomb. Grey's Anatomy. Surgery to remove unexploded ordnance is a real thing. The Army has published guidelines on how to do it safely. Now a 
Arterial spray. Black Hawk down. Alright, let me get a look at that. <laughs> That's quite dramatic. <laughs> Blood can spray from an artery if it's severed in an open wound, but that specific example on the is under quite a bit of pressure, and the human body does not generate that amount of blood pressure. It's not possible. Like a Surgeon by Weird Al Yankovic. Hey, like a surgeon. Everything depicted here in this music video is, according to my experience, 100% accurate and true. Just kidding, it's completely ridiculous, but it's still very funny and I love it. It's a fact. Conclusion. At the end of the day, I don't expect the directors and the actors to get every little detail right, but it's still pretty fun to watch. And by the way, if you are enjoying Technique Critique, subscribe to Wired. Stat. All right, great. That's a wrap. Awesome. Good job.